Welcome everybody, I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield, and I was thinking today we'll do another very simple Blender 2.8 tutorial for tabletop gaming. In this case, we're going to be working with some curve tokens. Oh, let me hold that more. Oh, wait, wait, no, no, there we go. I think that's close enough. <laughs> Using the curve tools to create some really cool faction tokens. Now, this guy here is from Warhammer Age of Sigmar or Warcry. It's the Stormcast Vanguard. But this tutorial can pretty much apply to, I think, almost every tabletop game out there. So let's dive into Blender. let's just start right off inside Blender. And the first step is to add a reference image of the logo you're trying to create. Here I have the Stormcast Vanguard from Warcry. And you add this by going Shift A, choosing Image, and then choosing Reference, and find the image on your computer. Now once it's loaded in, one little trick you have to do, I'm going to press 1 to jump to the um, front orthographic view. If you're not already in orthographic view, press Numpad 5 to go to that mode. With the reference image selected, I want to press G and Z and just move it down a little bit. Um, this is a little gimmicky trick because when you start adding stuff to the scene, it's going to appear basically in line with the reference image if you don't move it and then you can't find it. It's really screwy. But anyway, then press 7 and jump back to the top camera view. And now we're going to start building out the logo. And we're going to do this primarily with the Biazer curve. So if I hit Shift A, choose Curve. And then I want to choose uh, Bazer. Is that how I pronounce it? Bazer, Bazer, I don't know, something like that. Click on that, and you're going to see somewhere in your screen, something like this appears. Now, there's two ways we can approach this. One is make it a curved line, or another is make it a very sharp polygon line. So for the first two parts here, where I'm going to work with a lightning bolt, I'm going to make those be a polyline. So what I'm going to do, let me press G and X and drag this line more or less over top of our um, logo here. And I want to press tab to go into edit mode of the curve. Now in the upper left hand corner of the screen, we want to press curve. I want to choose set spline type and I want to choose um, poly. And what you can see now is that makes it into a series of basically sharp lines. And then I'm just going to go ahead and left click on one of the vertices. We're going to line up with one of the corners of one of the pieces of the logo. And then I'll do the same thing for the other. And all I'm going to do now is hold down control and then press the right mouse button. And what this will do is it's going to start adding lines such that I'm going to trace around the logo. Now if I botch it up a little bit like that, I can just press G. It's going to let me move the vertex around and then I can carry on with the process. So at this point, I've got one more line to make, and how I add that one, you want to press Alt-C, and what that'll do is it'll close up your polygon. So zoom back out a little bit using the mouse wheel, kind of take a look at things, see if they look all right. If not, go back, make a few adjustments, and then I'm going to do the same process to create the top of the lightning bolt. So I'm going to tab out of that particular curve. Let's do Shift-A, add another curve here. Once again, we're going to see here, where is it at? It's hiding over here. Then I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode. And once again, go to curve, set spline type to poly. And then let me just tab out of edit mode, drag it back over here to where it's more or less on top of this top half of the logo and repeat the process I just did for tracing around the outside of the bottom lightning bolt. And then using the polyline, I'm going to actually build these four points to the kind of the ring star thing going on here. But I'm not going to build the inside ring just quite yet. I can do a little bit of stylizing with some depth effects in a little bit later. Now the last step here is to actually make the ring itself. And for that, we're going to use the curve again. But this time, we're not going to convert it over to be poly mode. We're just going to keep it here in Bayser mode. Or I, I, I can't pronounce that word. I'm not going to try to pretend to pronounce it. But what I got to do is pretty much trace the outside of the circle. So it wraps around here, comes like that, and then wraps back around. Um, so for that, I want to place the center of the curve, which is this orange dot. Let's put it more or less as pretty close as you can anyway to the very inside of the ring, so the very center of the ring. Let's go to edit mode with tab. 
I'm going to start by moving the first vertice to the a corner point there of the ring. And what I want to do now is rotate this line. So you see this is line going here. This controls the direction of the curve of that point. I want to rotate it so it's tangent to that point on the ring. Now what I'm going to do is move this point to let's see if it goes somewhere up here. And now I'm going to be playing around with these endpoints by moving them around a little bit. And I want to get the shape of this curve to match the outside of the ring. And then, just like before, when I want to add the next vertice, I'm going to hold down control, choose right click, and this time it's going to kind of give it some random vector for its angle. Once again, let's just move these handles around until we got something that will work pretty well. Once you've got the shape complete, let's tab out of that. And now what you got here, though, are a bunch of curves. They're not meshes. So within Blender, there's two different things, curves and meshes. When it comes to 3D printing, everything has to be a mesh. Basically, it's got to be represented by a bunch of individual vertices, not any sort of weird angles or things like that, like curves normally are. So what we have to do is go through each of these items, convert them into a mesh, and then give them a height. The ring is probably going to be the tallest object, the four pointed arrows, they're going to be a little bit smaller than the ring, so they're going to be a little bit shorter. That's why I made them separate elements. And then the two halves of the lightning bolt are going to be the same height, but they're also going to be a little bit shorter than the ring. So to go through this process, first left click on your object. So in this case, let me left click on the ring. We're going to go up to the object tab here in the upper left hand corner of the screen. And we're going to choose convert to mesh from curve slash meta slash surf slash text. So this second option here. And now not much is gonna to appear to visually happen, but if I press tab to go into edit mode, you can see all those little handles for developing the shape of the curve, they're gone now. And what you've got instead are a whole bunch of little vertices. Now if you wanna drive yourself crazy, feel free to go and make further adjustments, but it's probably good enough as is. So what you wanna do is press A to select everything, press F to create a face. So what you just did is you took your outline and filled it in. But if I jump to say the front view here, everything is still flat. So I'm going to press E for extrude and move my mouse cursor up. So each one of these small grid lines, that is a tenth of a millimeter. <laughs> so um, we're going to have to do some scaling in a little bit. But for right now, I'm just going to press G and Z and kind of pull this up to, let's say, around 4. So what? I, yeah, let's do that, about 4. Um, we'll make it a more appropriate size later, but just for right now, it's, we're doing relative sizes. Now, I'm going to repeat the process for all the other objects and set them to an appropriate height. I'm thinking the spikes, I'll make those be about 2.5, and, and the lightning bolt, I'll probably make that be about 3. If things look all right, you should have some pretty cool looking 3D. Uh oh, that one. Did I just? Oh, I might just. Hmm. <laughs> what happened there? I don't know. Well, let's fix that point. Well, there you go. Now things should look pretty good. I guess we got to give this thing a more proper size because right now it's like I don't know two millimeters across. Okay, so let's pretend you're putting this on a token. So to represent the token, we're going to go ahead and add a cylinder. So shift A, choose mesh, and then cylinder. In the lower left hand corner down here, we want to enter some values. For vertices, let's crank this sucker up to like 256. That way, it, this actual cylinder looks kind of like a circle or pretty darn close to it. For the radius, let's make it a one inch diameter token. So that is 25.4 millimeters. Of course, radius is half a diameter. So that should be, if I'm doing my math right, 12.7. The depth, now this is going to be in millimeters as well. So I would say, let's do a three millimeter depth. So it's going to be about an eighth of an inch thick. It's not going to be a very thick token. 
Of course, it looks absolutely huge compared to our tiny little um, thing over here, tiny little logo. So what we first need to do is move this thing directly on top of our logo. So let's press N. That's going to bring up a bunch of stats up here. And we want to click on the X, Y, and Z and change these all to zero. Then let's left click on the um, logo. Oh, that's right. We got a bunch of pieces to the logo, don't we? So what I actually got to do now is box select. So press B and go over the entire logo. Let's get rid of the now fully that reference image is in the way. Hold on. <laughs> Let's let me just come on. There you go. Just left click on the reference image. We can press H to hide it because we don't need it anymore. We're done with it. Let's box select over our logo and then hold down shift and left click on just like the lightning bolt. And let's press Control J to turn it all into one object. Now, one thing we should do, because we're 3D printing stuff, um, let's go into, um, go into edit mode here. Press A to select everything. And this is just kind of a little magical thing. It, don't worry about what exactly it does, but it tends to resolve a lot of issues with 3D printing. We want to go up to Mesh in the upper left-hand corner. Choose Normals. Recalculate outside. Once again, it's magic 3D math. Don't worry about it, but it often solves problems with 3D printing and 3D modeling. Well, 3D printing in particular. Okay, now what we need to do is scale this logo up so that it mostly takes out the token. So press S and just drag your mouse away from it here. Um, so let's see, that might be a little bit too big. You can press G then to move the logo around and try to center it as best as possible. That doesn't look too bad. And then, now we can see over here we got some little bit larger dimensions for our logo. In particular, we want to worry about Z. This is how tall it is. I think if we make this guy be also, let's make it 3.5 millimeters tall. Therefore, if I rotate the camera around, choose solid, you can see a little bit of depth to the logo there. That's looking pretty good. What I want to do, let me go to either the front mode or side mode and jump back to wireframe. Press G and Z and move it up so that the logo itself is maybe embedded a couple tenths of a millimeter. So let's see, one, two, three, about a half of a millimeter into the token surface itself. And there you go. You should have something that more or less looks like the token. That's actually a really intense token, isn't it? Let's turn that down to 2.5 millimeters and just make sure it's still in a good spot. It is. And the last step, I'm actually going to go ahead and save that off elsewhere just so I can use it later. But when I click on the logo, click on the token, hit Control J to join them into a single object. As long as nothing got screwy, you can take this guy, export it as an STL, and print it out on your 3D printer. Well, thank you guys all for watching. Once again, I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield. If you want to see more tutorials like Blender for Tabletop Gaming or Robotics, as MicroFlash Delta has got one more episode left in the series, at least officially in the build process. And then from there, I don't know, I got some other cosplay stuff coming up and whatnot. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button and like the video, share, and you know, it's just, that's how YouTube works. Anyway, thank you guys all for watching and have a great week.